Now that we have seen how we can search for stable models via conflict-driven no-good learning, let's look at the underlying algorithms. And first of all, at no-good propagation. So the purpose of no-good propagation is to determine deterministic consequences, either via unit propagation on the completion no-good and the dynamic no-goods, or by detecting unfounded sets. And the reason why the detection of unfounded sets is, has, a, has a dedicated bullet here is because there we have to be smart, because there may be an exponential number of unfounded sets. Hence, we can't just compile them out, just as we do with the completion no-goods, and we have to come up with dedicated methods for that. On the other hand, the good news is that is once we have a tight program, that is a program that has no loops in the dependency graph, then we do not even have to consider unfounded sets because the inferences are all covered by the completion no-goods. So here, there we can scratch this out. So even though this is actually uh, more frequently the case, actually most of the benchmarks I came across, actually most, let's say two-thirds of the benchmarks are tight, uh, we have to invest a bit more uh, brain juice into un un unfounded set handling. And for this, we have to come up with a dedicated strategy, actually. First of all, let me say that there are different strategies to compute unfounded sets. And then, of course, also different strategies to counterbalance the exponential number of loop no-goods that may result from these guys. So what I will explain to you is one such strategy, and of course, it's our preferred strategy and also the one implemented in the ASP Solver class. Well, the idea more or less is to take a lazy approach. What else have you expected of us? But actually, lazy is a technical term, which actually means that whenever you uh, have a, a specification, right, then you do not compile it out. And this is actually the eager approach. That, that's what we do with the completion no-goods, where uh, the program is compiled into the completion no-goods. That's the eager approach. And in the lazy approach, the idea is, well, you, you, you have a dedicated algorithm that actually spits out uh, the corresponding no-goods when need be, right? So they are not all put into the solver, they are only added to the solver um, when something was derived that makes this no-good relevant. And that's the approach we take. Just to, to, to say actually that this notion of eager and lazy solving is something well-defined in the literature. Let me zip it and let's come back to our lazy approach. So our strategy is to add, add loop no-goods to the dynamic no-goods in a very sparse fashion, only atom by atom for all the atoms in an unfounded set. That's more or less the idea. And let me explain this strategy and more or less underpin this with a few remarks on things that you more or less know, right? So, first of all, whenever a set of atoms is unfounded, and again, actually in the algorithm we always just look for loops, you may also think of loops there, doesn't matter, right? Just Whenever a set is unfounded, this means that all external bodies for this set have been turned to be have been turned false. Because then there is no external support for this set or for this loop. Okay. In turn, this means that whenever we pick an atom and any atom of, out of this unfounded set, the loop no good that we get from this is unit resulting. Because since all the external bodies have been found to be false, uh, they, they are, at least they are all in the current assignment. Well, uh, what, whatever is with the, with the T of A, we don't know. But here as well, we look at a particular set of unfounded uh, sets. And actually these are the ones, well, the non-empty ones, that have not yet been found to be false. Because unfounded sets or atoms in an unfounded set that are false, they are irrelevant for us because they already have been assigned false, so we don't have to do this again, right? So we look actually only at unfounded sets that are where the atoms are either undefined or true, right? And uh, actually, such um, such a set always exists because keep in mind uh, the completion no goods. And this is actually what we, what, 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 which, what we, which we take into account when we do un, uh, unit propagation. Compute, com, uh, compute at least the supported models, right? 
And keep in mind from an, uh, actually an example back from the, from the axiomatic characterization, whenever you have a supported model that is not stable, there is actually a loop sitting between the supported model and the consequences of the program reduced with this supported model. Anyway, you've seen this already, right? So anyway, so what, 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 what we get is actually whenever we have such an unfounded uh, set that consists of true and undefined atoms, we know that this guy contains some loop uh, of the program. Okay, good. Then what, what, what we then get in the end is this strategy that, that says that, okay, whenever we have an unfounded set, we pick an atom out of this unfounded set and add this loop no good to the dynamic no goods. And keep in mind that this loop no good is right away uh, ready for unit propagation. So actually f of a is a unit resulting literal once we added it. And this will then trigger either a conflict or uh, some further consequences by unit propagation. Because again, we add it to the dynamic no goods and on these guys we do unit propagation. And keep in mind that the atoms that we pick are either, they're, they're not false, right? They are either undefined or true. So if the guy has been uh, true, then we get a conflict. And if the guy was undefined, then we get a new consequence. So that's more or less the idea. And from this uh, strategy, then, we also uh, devised the propagation algorithms, which we will look at next. So here is our algorithm for no good propagation. It takes the logic program, the current set of uh, dynamic no-goods and the current assignment as inputs. Keep in mind that the completion no-goods are determined from the program, hence we don't make them explicit in the input because they can be determined from the program. And it results, no matter whether we spotted the conflict or not, in a hopefully extended assignment and a set of no-goods, which also may be extended in case we added some loop no-goods. Anyway, otherwise the algorithm uh, loops until it reaches a fixed point and more or less falls in two parts. Now the first part, that's the upper part here, does unit propagation and the second part, in case the program is non-tight, cares about unfounded set detection. Now let me first detail the part on unit propagation. By definition, unit propagation is an iterative process that produces unit resulting literals until no such literals can be produced anymore. We do the same thing actually here. Uh, we go into this loop here and sigma actually is uh, a set of no goods that are ready for unit propagation. And uh, as soon as we don't have any such uh, no goods anymore, we then actually exit the loop. Okay, what do we do in the loop? First thing we do in the loop, we check whether a no good has been violated, that is whether a no good is entirely contained in the current assignment. If this is the case, we return the current assignment and the, conf, uh, the, the dynamic no goods. Okay, good. So the rest more or less is again pretty straightforward, more or less applying uh, unit propagation. First of all, what we, we do here is we detect which are the no goods that are currently active. And this means that, that these are the no-goods where all but one literal are contained in the current assignment and where this one literal that is not yet in the assignment has not yet been added in form of its complement to the assignment. That's more or less the definition of a unit resulting literal, right? So sigma is the guy we want to, to add to the assignment and we do so here below. Okay, anyway, so now that we have computed all active uh, no-goods, we actually check that there are such active no-goods and if there are such active no-goods we pick one along with the, with, the, with the only signed literal in it that is not yet in the assignment. So what we do here is we assign to the complement, the one that we are going to add to the assignment, the current decision level and convince yourself that this is actually the current decision level because what we do here is we look at the no-good we have currently at hand, this delta here, and we remove the one that is not in the assignment. Then we look at all the at all the, the, the literals that are somewhere in the assignment and we take the maximum one, that is the one that is the, 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 the deepest in the assignment, right? It has been added last. And this guy actually must be on the current decision level because otherwise 
we had done this inference way before. So anyway, some food for thought for some food for thought for you. The alternative had been this is actually also in the paper that I attached to the workspace on this part at teaching.potasco.org. Uh, I could have passed the decision level right here and just just assigned it here. But anyway, this again I think illustrates a bit things. So then we do this more or less until we have no um, active. Um, no goods left, that is active in the sense of producing unit resulting literals. And then here we check whether the pr current program is tight. And keep in mind that a program is tight if it's uh, if the dependency graph of the program, the positive dependency graph of the program does not contain any loops. Then we are done, right? So that in this case, for tight programs, we only perform unit propagation, stop with a fixed point, and return the current assignment and the uh, dynamic no goods. And we only enter this part here if the program is not tight and then we have to care about unfounded set detection. Finally, let us see how the ideas on unfounded set detection discussed on the previous slide have entered the algorithm. So we have this set uh, U here that is a set of unfounded atoms. However, we are only interested in finding non-empty unfounded sets. Hence, whenever this variable is, is empty, it indicates something. Either no, um, um, no unfounded set was found, etc. It is more or less abused to, 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 to signal in the algorithm. So just keep this in mind. Whenever this variable is empty, it's a special case. Anyway, so whenever we have a non-tile program, that is, we do not exit here, we, we enter this, um, this code path. And then it, when, when we do, at, at the start, more or less, when u is the empty set, we compute the first unfounded set at this point here. Here the idea is to compute an arbitrary unfounded set, hopefully a small one, it doesn't have to be large, because whenever we get a non-empty unfounded set, we simply pick here one element from the unfounded set and build the corresponding loop no good here. And keep in mind, again, what, what we discussed on the previous slide, that whenever u is an unfounded set, this means that it has no external support, that is, all external bodies of this unfounded set must have been found to be false. Hence, this set here is, we know at that point that this is already completely contained in the assignment. This means if we take this loop no good here and go back into unit propagation, then immediately we will get f of a, that is, a will be set to be false. That is, by generating this no good, we immediately launch a, a, a unit propagation, which, and that's actually the idea, right? So again, we compute an unfounded set. So if there is no such unfounded set, if the variable is still empty, well, we're done, there is no unfounded set, we return the current assignment along with the dynamic nodes. Otherwise, we pick exactly one atom out of the unfounded set, generate the corresponding loop no good and re-enter unit propagation. And now the hope is actually, if this is our unfounded set, we picked one atom, added the loop no good to no good propagation, and now we hope actually that no good propagation will make other atoms in this unfounded set false. Because if unit propagation does the job for us, we only had added actually at that point one loop no good for the initial atom and the rest was done by propagation without us adding any adding any loop no goods. Okay, good. So that's that's more or less the idea. And actually in practice this works out not too bad. Anyway, so we pick one atom out of the unfounded set, we do we launch unit propagation again. Then once we come out here, first thing we do is we remove all fall all atoms that have been found to be false from the previous unfounded set. Be Hopefully, there are a lot of them, and unit propagation has set them to false. And we don't, since they are already false, we don't have to consider them now again. We already know that they are false, right? So, then, well, in case uh, we were able to set all atoms in the unfounded set to false, well, we look for the next unfounded set. Okay. If there is none, and we have also eliminated all, all atoms from the previous unfounded set, then we, we, we go back, we're done, there, there's no, there are no unfounded atoms left. Otherwise, and otherwise means either there were, there were atoms left in the previous unfounded set, or we have computed a new non-empty unfounded set, we pick again an atom, build its loop no good, add it to the dynamic no goods, resume unit propagation, and we do this 
until uh, there are no unfounded thefts left, and then we exit the algorithm. So that's the idea uh, with, uh, by, with units with unfounded set detection. And keep in mind that more or less the workhorse is for us unit propagation. This is really the operation that should, should do most of the work. And unfounded set checking, we, 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 this actually checks global, global conditions, right? But we then only pick one atom out of it and then immediately resume unit propagation in the hope that this will actually set further atoms in the unfounded set to false. Okay, that's the idea. Now let's just fix a few properties that we expect actually of the unfounded set check uh, before we ultimately do uh, an example just illustrating the whole procedure again. Isn't it funny? Unit propagation does almost all of the work and we talk mostly about unfounded set detection. Oh well. Good, so anyway. So, no good propagation is the algorithm for no good, no good propagation relies on some properties of the unfounded set detection algorithm. And they are just summarized here. So, first of all, the unfounded set must be determined among the true and undefined atom. So, atoms that have already been assigned false are not interesting because why, why assign them false again, right? Then, the algorithm has to make sure that whenever it returns an unfounded set, that also the, all the external bodies have been set false in the current assignment. And last but not least, this is the abuse of the empty set. The algorithm returns the empty set if and only if there is no non-empty unfounded set among the true and the undefined atoms. Well, that's it. Good. So, and so in this way, more, this gives you more or less some properties that uh, an unfounded set algorithm must satisfy if you want to, to plug it in. Otherwise, there are, of course, alternatives for unfounded set uh, detection and computation. A very popular approach is to calculate the greatest unfounded set. But actually, these algorithms mainly relied on, 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 actually on DPLL and not on CDNL. And for learning, actually, you need the no goods. You need to have the reasons in order to do conflict analysis. And hence, this approach is not very viable there. Okay. Otherwise, of course, uh, we're not also we are not looking for arbitrary unfounded sets. We, there is always this analysis happening during parsing, where you look at the, in the, at the dependencies in the positive atom dependency graph, right? And there you detect the strongly connected components. And then you keep actually the atoms that make up the strongly uh, connected subgraphs because these are really the sources of, un of, of unfounded sets and these are, that's, these are the only places that you have to look at uh, in, in general, right? And that's what, that is actually what, what also is happening here even though we don't detail that so far. Anyway, so uh, these are just some properties and next is actually we look at some food for thought for you. Actually a real, uh, actually a real, our abstraction of an unfounded set algorithm. So here's a specification of the unfounded set algorithm used in CLASP. Um, again, I don't want to go really into details and rather consider this as food for thought. For those of you who are really interested in it, uh, read up in the paper I attached uh, to the workspace um, at teaching.potasco.org. Anyway, so the basic ingredients here are actually the strongly connected components in which an atom is situated and source pointers. And actually, source pointers were a construct already invented by the designers of the S-model system from Aalto University in Finland, where the idea is that you have, you have an atom, and actually you only look at atoms that occur in, in these in, 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 in loops, right? And then you have something that is a source pointer. This is, if you like, an external body that provides a yet unrefuted external support, right? And so you take the atoms and you all give them such a source pointer. And as long as an atom has still a potential, not yet refuted um, external support, a source pointer, it cannot belong to an unfounded set. Right? And that's, that's more or less the idea here, right? So you, you have these source pointers. This is a bit of a, a, a lazy data structure that more is a pointer that as long as an atom has a source pointer, you don't have to look at it. But once the source pointers uh, get assigned false, right? Then you have to, to check things out. This is actually what happens in the very first step here, right? You look actually at all the atoms whose source pointer has become false or is 
undefined. That's more or less the initialization step, right? And then you look at the guys that are in the same strongly connected component. So SSC of A gives, gives us the strongly connected component in which A resides. And then this, this scope is extended of things where we have, one has to look, look at. And then here, last but not least, the unfounded set is uh, computed by looking at source pointers, finding new source pointers, and so on and so forth. And keep in mind that this idea of source pointers, uh, I actually uh, already had this idea in mind when I did the blue board videos uh, in the well-founded uh, semantics setting, right? So perhaps check again there, you may remember these ones where I painted these green lines there, these were actually the source pointers. Okay, so this then uh, more or less concludes the unfounded set detection. Let's briefly wrap up with an example. So here's again our running example and more or less you've already seen this slide, right? So this is more or less the assignment from starting from an empty assignment, right, up to the conflict that we obtain here with the loop no good. It's just now uh, made explicit that we, we, we make a choice, can't propagate, make a choice, propagate as much as we can, that's all we get. And here we make another choice, propagate. This is all unit propagation until here, right, because here we have actually uh, no goods from completion, from the completion. While here then finally we do the unfounded set check and so we detect actually at that point that U and V is unfounded and that both external supports, this guy and this guy, belong to the assignment here and here, uh, as well as uh, in, in our case actually T of U belongs there as well. So here actually we get a conflict. Because again the idea is when we build this loop no good here, we only know that the external supports belong to the assignment. And then two things can happen. In any case, we would like to make uh, u false, but here this would lead to a conflict because uh, t of u is already contained in the assignment, right? Otherwise, if it had not been the case, we had here deduced f of u. Okay, so this wraps up uh, no good propagation. Let's look at the last, uh, at the remaining uh, sub-procedure, namely conflict analysis.